The following is a presentation of TFNN. The P Power Trading Hour with your host, David White. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-445-1044. Now, David White. And welcome all to another exciting edition of the Power Trading Hour with me, your humble, lovable, and squeezably soft host. As always, we'd like to come to you at this time. The following takes place between 2 p.m. and 3 p.m. And what do we have going on today? Well, the first thing we want to look at is volume 3.7 and change uh, for the uh, volume 3.7 billion. That's the CBOE consolidated tape. If you want to know what I'm talking about, I'll be glad to send you the link. But it's all the volume everywhere of everything traded and uh, not just the floor volume of the New York Stock Exchange or what the New York uh, or what the NASDAQ says, but uh, all 23 different places that you can actually trade stocks uh, in the United States. So we, we, you can't really hide it. Um, anyway, we're up uh, 17, 18 points on the S&P cash. We were up about uh, 30 at one point. Uh, and again, that volume just not coming in. So the mark is more on the brittle side than on the strong side. Up 105, is that right? Let me update this just to make darn sure. Yep, up 105 on the uh, Dow. NASDAQ's up 98. The Russell's up 12. And uh, we'll take a look at what we have in the, uh, oh, in the, where is that? They've moved it on me. Okay, markets, futures and commodities. There as we go. Uh, gold's down fifteen dollars and twenty cents. Silver's down thirty eight cents. Platinum down just a buck twenty. Copper um, two dollars and sixty six cents. Not anywhere close to uh, signaling any kind of inflation. That uh, kind of comes around the $3 mark. So still hovering around there. Um, when we look at uh, crude uh, oil down a quarter at 53.74. Uh, when we get to the almighty, almighty dollar, uh, it's uh, up 20 cents at uh, 96.69. It's kind of been bouncing around in this area. You got up to, yeah, what can you say? Uh, well, let's call it 96.85 uh, earlier in the trading day. So we're down a little bit out there. Uh, certainly had a uh, big gap up, and of course all the associated hoo ha ha from last week. And I don't get to say hoo ha ha as much as I would like. I think I'll say it once again later in the show, maybe. Uh, no real earnings coming up uh, on Wednesday. Uh, after the bell, I think you got a few things. You got uh, Lululemon, uh, Restoration Hardware, but that's about it. You get into Thursday, you got Duluth Holdings, they make underwear. I mean, that, that's not going to move the markets. And you've got uh, really into Thursday after the close where you've got Avago, uh, which is really going to be the first thing. And of course, Friday morning, a whole lot of nothing. Next week, you get into a much of anything the answer is uh, not really so we've got a market that is kind of wandering around um, for news and literally anything can move the uh, s and p's 10 points one way or the other now uh, but there's just not a lot of reason for people uh, so far to think uh, that the downside is the uh, end everybody's been predicting for forever I, you know, we're going to get these sharp pullbacks uh, as we did. And then the question is whether or not you have the guts to actually buy those lows. Uh, the hog pits of the 1970s, and actually, I hear it two different ways, in the 30s and the 70s. But uh, I don't know, maybe in the 30s, it sounds better, doesn't it? Um, sell them while they're yelling and buy them while they're crying. And uh, we did that in both newsletters with both hands. And... Uh, 
being rewarded handsomely so far. Uh, but, uh, you know, you got to buy it when it's on sale. And you got to sell it when everybody's euphoric. And we kind of done that. Um, I'm a little nervous about holding equities uh, short term up here because they can instantly turn around. And um, we've got a couple of emails already asking me if I'm really worried about uh, this test of this high. And the answer is not yet. I can be, but I'm going to assume that there are 4,000 people that I probably just know that would say, I've got a short 2,900. And that's kind of the thing that you don't want to do. You want to be the shorter uh, when everybody else is not thinking about shorting. In fact, uh, earlier in the day, someone brought up uh, Beyond Meats and uh, whether they should buy some out-of-the-money uh, puts on it. And I don't have any problem with that, but generally what you want in one of the, re especially in these highly shorted stocks, what you want them to do uh, is uh, actually quit shorting, give up, because generally the reason these things go to such incredible levels uh, on, the, uh, on the markets is because people just keep shorting and getting squeezed out, shorted and getting squeezed out. Shorts are the weakest hands in the market almost always. And so if you're on that side, you got to make sure that the 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 both the stock and the market are headed down and also cover when you can and not when you have to. Um, what is the Beyond Meat? Because I was bringing it up earlier in the day. Maybe I've got it on here. Uh, there it is, B-Y-N-D. Okay. And uh, Beyond Meat probably beyond food, uh, of course, this continues to go higher. But in this chart, I can show you that black part of that volume bar is what people were shorting. So Friday gaps up, and what do they do? They short the living daylight out of it. I don't have the numbers yet for today, but that will continue. If we continue to look at uh, BYND on the daily numbers, which we don't know how many people covered before the end of the day, but we know how many trades started as a short position in a given day. And on Friday, uh, that was uh, 25%. Uh, the day before that, just 17%. But the day before that, 28%, 28%, 29%, 31%, 30%, 29%, 30%, 30%. I think you can kind of get in the idea that if these things are, you know, if a market maker needs to make a market, he may account for 6 to 8% in a given day on an average stock. Maybe on a stock like this, maybe it's 10 or 12%. Uh, but uh, if a lot of people ask me why I decided to go ahead and pull the trigger uh, back on Tesla when we shorted that at 340 or 345 um, earlier in the year, and that was it. If you looked at the daily shorting, they finally gave up. No one had the gumption to pull the trigger. And that's generally when the stocks really roll over. So uh, watch that FINRA daily short numbers on Beyond Meat, Beyond Food. Soylent Green is people, folks. The Taz Profile Scanner is the most revolutionary piece of trading software that you will ever try. Wouldn't you like to approach the markets with confidence? As you begin your trading day, it's likely that you'll be faced with lots of decisions. In order to make the best decision, the first thing you'll need is a strategy that will help you minimize your risks. Whether we're in a bull or bear market, a good strategy is to have the tools needed to help you scan and analyze the markets before you trade. The Taz Profile Scanner instantly scans and filters over 2,500 global financial markets, such as stocks, ETFs, commodity futures, and Forex. Headed by Steve Dahl, president of Taz Market Profile, the Taz Profile Scanner understands that in today's technological world, the use of top flight software applications, automated trading algorithms, and technical analysis expertise is essential to successful trading in today's market. Whether you're looking at the trade matrix, the ETF heat grid, 
the market breadth, the landscape charts, or the many other features of the TAS Profile Scanner, this is a piece of software that will revolutionize how you look at the markets and set up your trades. The team at TAS has even put together a 12-part video series to walk you through every aspect of the TAS Profile Scanner, which you can find directly on the TAS Order page at TFNN.com. Sign up now for only $97 a month with a risk-free 30-day trial so you have nothing to lose and everything to gain. See for yourself how you can harness the full power of the TAS Profile Scanner by visiting the front page of TFNN.com today and you'll find the TAS Profile Scanner under the Services section. Remember, with a 30-day money-back guarantee, you have nothing to lose. Don't let another day pass you by without trying out this amazing piece of software that will revolutionize how you look at the market and how you place trades. Sign up today. Steve Dahl and Tom O'Brien have just announced a special webinar on June 19th for all subscribers to the TAS Profile Scanner. Steve and Tom will break down the trade matrix, market breadth, heat grid, as well as the three-step process you can use with the TAS Profile Scanner to identify market movers and how to capitalize on that move. For all the details and to get started with the TAS Profile Scanner today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. With a 30-day money-back guarantee, you have nothing to risk. Go sign up today. TFNN has launched our brand new website. You can still visit us at the same TFNN.com URL, but when you do, you'll see a new and improved homepage with a much simpler navigation, whether you're watching Tiger TV live in high definition or just accessing your newsletter subscriptions. We even have new pricing in six months and yearly options. Check out the new TFNN.com now and experience all the upgrades. TFNN.com, educating investors. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. It is nothing but history repeating. On this day in 1858, two ships set out to begin work on what will become the first operational transatlantic cable. Previous attempts at laying a transatlantic cable had failed, designed for telegraph operation. The cable run is completed on August 5th, and the first message sent August 12th. However, the cable fails on September 18th. The repair was not possible at that time. Uh, it would take another almost 17 years to lay the cable for a variety of reasons. Uh, a lot of people thought that um, there was actually sabotage involved uh, to do this uh, for competitors and other reasons. Uh, but uh, it took several attempts and finally they started to figure out, of course, they didn't have plastics at those times. And they had a thing called uh, gutta percha, which is a bunch of goo that comes out of a tree uh, kind of like rubber that they wrapped it in. But uh, eh, trying to figure out it, uh, they didn't even know how deep the ocean was. It was just deep. Uh, so they didn't know that at some points out there it was 5,000 feet deep and, uh, what, 1,000 times the pressure at sea level. Uh, so any little pinprick would be uh, easily uh, let water get in. Uh, and they had to just work around it. But uh, they did it, tried to fix it. Couldn't figure out how to fix cables and pick them up. They finally figured that out. Then we ran smack dab into the uh, uncivil war. I'm not going to call it civil war anymore. Seemed very uncivil to me. Uh, and uh, it uh, eh, had a, a couple of years on 1970, or excuse me, 1878. So, yeah, you know, about 30 years in the making. Uh, but finally, once it got uh, working, that was it. We've always had... Uh, at least uh, communications uh, from what now about 135 years with Europe and the rest of the world uh, at a moment's notice. Okay, what else is going on today? Well, we'll get into some charts, take a look at that. Um, S&P kind of pulling back a little bit. There was some news about a helicopter hitting a, a high rise somewhere in New York, and they may have just uh, eh, automatically reacted. 
uh, to that news. Who knows what will happen by the end of the day. We're still up 14 points on the S&P cash, still up 80 points on the Dow. So uh, we'll keep a close eye on that and see whether or not, uh, you know, like as I said, we, we've got some fairly light volume. It's not all that exciting. Uh, now, Wednesday, of course, starts options expiration. Uh, and on options expiration, you've got uh, everybody going delta neutral. So expect basically the unexpected on Wednesday to get some volatility in the market. Uh, but that's the day they kind of set where the bottom of the market should be about 80% of the time. So if we're anywhere in this area, uh, it looks like we'll continue hanging out for the idea that there will be some resolution to the trade uh, announcement. Uh, but we'll continue to do that. Uh, 288840 on the S&P cash. Uh, already uh, on the blower uh, today, we've got uh, um, UVXY calls. Uh, no, I don't think so. UVXY, uh, let's take a quick look at it. Um, UVXY calls pretty much have to see a couple of things, and that's one, that you're not in options expiration because that's more than anything probably uh, sets a floor on it for Wednesday. You have to have some fairly uh, outrageous or um, ex uh, extenuating circumstance, I think, to get them. Uh, you also have to have... Um, the two waves of the longer term, shorter term of that line up. And uh, I was watching a special or something on, I don't know what it was, National Geographic or something else, but it was actually talking about why they put these bulbous bows on the, uh, begin on the front of these big cruise ships. And if you ever looked at it, it looks like a giant torpedo right at the waterline uh, that gets a little bit forward of the uh, ship uh, and the size and shape of that all is uh, engineered uh, to cancel out the waves that go down the side of the ship. If you cancel out the waves, uh, then basically there's a whole uh, lot less uh, friction as you go through the water. Uh, it, you got kind of the same thing. You've got to find out where the waves meet. And right now I don't see, now it could, but you don't have a overwhelming uh, reason and position to go back into them. Um, again, you're probably looking, I, I think when we got those uh, were um, in May, or right around that third of May, and you had kind of a, a very good setup. You know, you weren't into options expiration quite yet. You just gotten over fund buying I mean, there's a lot of reasons to look for these waves uh, to match up uh, right after the end of fund buying, first couple of weeks before you get into options expiration or last week. Now, could we have a dip? We could, but to me, the next real big movement in this market's probably going to be after the 4th of July. We had kind of a real change. It took about a week to get it going because of all the negative news. But we certainly had a sea change in attitude coming out of that uh, Memorial Day weekend. And the next big one we'll have will probably be for the 4th of July, uh, which reminds me, I've got to put my vacation days up. So, um, you know, you've got a few things going on. I'm just not going to get too excited about pulling the trigger short without a extraordinary um, reason to do so. And I don't see one yet. We keep on pushing back up, but we'd have to have some fairly negative news. The market uh, continues to do fairly well. Uh, earnings are okay, uh, even though everybody's predicting doom and gloom because of the trade issues. But again, everybody, you know, as soon as I quit seeing everybody short, uh, shorting again, I'll start to worry. At the moment, I see a lot of reasons for people to, that are going to keep shorting. Doesn't mean the market won't go down. But generally, it doesn't go down very fast. Uh, when there's nobody to buy, no natural buyers, uh, that is just another reason to do so. Um, yeah, we talked about that on Friday with Lonnie for uh, 
Uh, please, I want to know. And whether or not this is exactly like Tilroy. And again, I think what you want to see is uh, that these things quit getting shorted. And I just don't see that yet. They're still kind of shorting these things. When everybody gives up and everybody's euphoric and the shorts have given up, that's generally where the market or a stock turns. Let's see if we have anything else going on here real quick before we get into stocks in the next segment. That's it. We'll look at some other things. I'll look at some of the big stocks and we'll kind of drill down into some others and uh, see if there's anything going on. Anything shaken. Be back in a minute. of least resistance is david white's daily trading newsletter and if you're looking for active trading ideas then now's a perfect time for a 30-day free trial to this powerful daily trading advisory service david uses his years of trading experience to offer his subscribers his trading ideas each morning in his path of least resistance newsletter using a combination of equity trades along with options david keeps his subscribers up to date with all pertinent market information with intraday afternoon updates when warranted don't miss out on this great chance to get a 30-day free trial to David's daily newsletter, The Path of Least Resistance, with no obligation to pay anything. David has been delivering solid recommendations for his subscribers recently, and if you'd like to see the type of newsletter he delivers every morning, then visit the front page of TFNN, and you'll find The Path of Least Resistance under Trading Newsletters. For all the details, and to start your 30-day free trial today, log on to TFNN.com now. Hi folks, Tom O'Brien here. If you'd like to get my daily newsletter, Market Insights, then now is a great time to sign up for a 30-day free trial. Every morning by 9.30, I send out my morning letter to subscribers with market commentary on a variety of markets, currencies, and commodities to keep investors up to date on the day's trading action. Included in Market Insights are specific buy and sell recommendations for stocks, ETFs, and even options, with stops and price targets included for every trade in my newsletter. If you'd like to try my newsletter risk-free for 30 days, then head over to the front page of TFNN and you'll find market insights under trading newsletters. I use my years of trading experience to bisect and dissect the market every morning and give my subscribers the most important information they need to know for the day ahead. I even issue afternoon updates for my subscribers whenever warranted with important market action. I'm always scouring the market for the next great trading opportunity. Sign up for your 30-day free trial to my daily newsletter, Market Insights, today by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Wow! Go get them, folks! TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed Designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. And we're back. We'll look at Microsoft. Uh, of course, first uh, solidly trillion dollar company in the world. There's other ones that made it there first. This one looks like it's going to stick. Uh, we'll look at Apple here in just a minute. Uh, you are gapping above the previous highs. And, you know, you basically were looking for something like 38 million shares, something like that. Uh, you got about 18 million so far uh, today on Microsoft. So watch the next couple of days and see whether or not Microsoft will stick at these levels. Again, 
if it pulls back, everybody's going to want. Now, you got two gaps in there. You want to watch for a third. I certainly wouldn't be shorting Microsoft right now. NVIDIA, on this one, uh, you really wanted to go test the 124. 46 level to really get a decent low in. You haven't done that. Got to 132.60, the June 3rd low, and you've bounced. I still suspect that you could get that 124.46 from the December 26th low. Uh, and FLX. And to, 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 what do we have here? Certainly you've got uh, yeah, kind of a reversal candle on Netflix today. It never had a lot of volume. Uh, we continue to think, or a lot of people continue to think, that there's going to be spending way too much money expanding into the rest of the world, hurting earnings going forward. Uh, at the same time, everybody wants to think that there's some kind of monopoly. I just don't see why anybody else in the world that has some cash that wants to do the same thing can't in the world. So I don't see, you know, there's a, you know, being an incumbent, being the monopoly is one thing, but I, you know what? I continue to look every month at the new stuff and see if there's anything I want to watch on it, and there isn't. And maybe Amazon just makes more things I want to watch, or maybe the fact that I get free shipping uh, at the same time that I'm paying for the movies eh, and, and TVs, just maybe a little bit different out there. Uh, to, to, to. Lots of people are looking at my LinkedIn profile, but ha ha ha, that's a phony one. It's not even my real name. To, to, to. Little do they know. They'd have to have a very good algorithm to beat my stuff. Okay. We looked at uh, Netflix. Let's take a look, a quick look at Apple and some of the other ones. Um, again, you had three gaps on the way down. Uh, you're basically filling that gap today uh, on Apple that goes back to the 13th of May. Came down with 57.4 million shares. You got 19.3 now. And again, I don't think this thing's going to instantly roll over. I could be wrong, but um, my guess is that maybe you get a little volatility uh, into Wednesday and then you set some kind of low. We kind of meander around a little while. You get past options expiration on the 21st. Maybe you get a handful of days into weakness going into fund buying at the end of the month. And maybe that, maybe we get a little bit more clues there. But right now, I don't see that much. Um, question about the SMHs. Uh, as we said, uh, Vago's coming up, but there's not much out there. You're basically filling this big gap down lower uh, that uh, continues uh, from the 13th of May. And, you know, you had kind of like some attempts to fill it, but it, they rolled over fairly quickly. Um, you were up on the second gap off the low in the SMHs, and you actually have a little bit more volume today. Uh, you wanted to see about 13 million You've got about 6.8 million, so eh, not that much happening in the world of what's happening now. Let's see, I want to look at some other scans. Uh, to, 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 to Apple, uh, question about uh, AMD coming in. Of course, you can email me at path at tfnn.com. Uh, you can call me at 877-927-6648 or put a message in the den. Uh, to, to, to. Okay, and that catches me up with the emails right now. Um, okay, I see why you want to be looking at uh, advanced micro devices. Uh, we are now challenging the September 13th high, $34.14. That had uh, 304 million shares uh, up into it and spiking it today with, say, let's call it 79 million shares. Um, so, yeah. Kind of interesting, but again, I think you're, if you're going to get a signal, it's going to be bright and extraordinary. It's not going to be subtle now, uh, like our last kind of high was. This is a, if we're going to get a high uh, that is shortable, it's going to be something rather spectacular this time, uh, not the uh, kind of biting your fingernails 
when I was short last time we were up here. Uh, to, 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 okay, Abbott Labs, A-B-T, um, testing its previous high, $80.74. That's the April 1st high that had 12 million shares in it today with 2.5 million shares. So again, we're running smack dab into a great deal of resistance in a lot of different stocks. Uh, what else do we have? AZN, AstraZeneca. Uh, man, there just hasn't been any volume or really exciting movement since uh, the low back on April 30th. Kind of came back and retested it on lighter volume, which set up this move higher. But there's not much going on there. Let's take a look at the IBB and see. Yeah, you've had a little bit of juice off the bottom, but the last two days have been not much. Got a little bit of a resistance level today. Uh, BBBY, Bed, Bath, and Below is back looking to try the $10.46 low that has never been tested from December 24th. Uh, that had 3.5 million shares. Um, you got a lot of energy to go back and test $10.46. Brooks Automotive, or Automation, Automation, uh, trying to break out from its high, 8.3 million shares on August 28th, $39.65. Today, just 300,000 shares. So we can see that everybody wants to get up to these highs. No one really wants to buy the breakouts, which we continue on with. Uh, let's see what else is in my list of stuff. Did we do Apple? I don't think we did Apple yet. AAPL. Um, oh, yeah. Back into this gap. Okay, so we did that. Uh, to, 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 to carb. To, to, to carbonite. Um, we talked about this one last week a little bit when this thing tested on June 4th, the $22.02 uh, low. Had not tested the all time low, 21 83 in the last year, and you need a 1.4 million shares. So you are testing these lows. Today, just 115,000 shares. You want to test 21.83, go below it, and close back above it. I think that will actually change a lot. Give me a call, 877-927-6648. I want to hear from you right now. Call 877-927-6648. in the CD market and looking for a secure investment, the Tiger First Mortgage Program may work for you. The security for these first mortgages are building lots in the Tax Opportunity Zone in St. Petersburg, Florida. The Tax Act of 2018 set up tax-free zones across the country where you can build and hold for 10 years and pay no tax on the profits, which makes these lots valuable. The investment is anywhere from $30,000 to $75,000. The interest paid is 7% yearly paid on a monthly basis. According to Bankrate.com, the best rate for a four-year CD in the country as of February 20th is 3.1%. A $50,000 investment at a normal four-year CD rate of 3.1% would give you income of $1,550 per year or $6,200 over the four-year period. That same $50,000 investment in the Tiger First Mortgage Program would give you $3,500 per year or $14,000 over the four years. Which would you prefer, $6,200 or $14,000 of interest on your investment? If you would like more information about the Tiger First Mortgage Program, you can call me at 877-518-9190. That's 877-518-9190. If you haven't checked out the newsletters page of TFNN.com, what are you waiting for? All of the TFNN newsletters are informative, up-to-date, affordable, and a must-have for every trader looking to gain a competitive informational edge in today's markets. TFNN newsletters cover every aspect of the markets to offer you the very latest in market news. Plus, new subscribers get to test drive our newsletters risk-free for 30 days. From all aspects of the markets, including stocks, bonds, metals, commodities, and tech, there's a newsletter to fit your needs exclusively from TFNN. Stay informed each day you trade and get the competitive edge that will help you stay ahead of the game. Visit our newsletters page by going to TFNN.com and click the newsletters button near the top of the page. 
TFNN.com. Educating investors. Are China A shares hot or not? If you trade China A shares, now may be time to take a closer look. Trade CHAU or CHAD, Directions Daily CSI 300 China A share bull and bear ETFs. China A shares in either direction. Visit directioninvestments.com today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the Direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact Direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. To Distributor for Side Fund Services, LLC. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV for the latest market information. And we brought up uh, Canadian solar last week as it comes back in. With this huge gap down on the 21st of March this year. Came down with 5.5 million shares. Tried to get into it uh, early May on 1.7 million shares. Uh, Friday, 800,000 shares. Today, back into it with 343,000. So, eh, continues to look rather weak. CSX, we take a look at this one. Uh, coming back up to the gap down uh, on the 7th of May. That came down with 5.4 million shares, up today with 1.45 so far. So again, fairly weak. Uh, to, 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 what do we have? Uh, Duncan Donuts uh, breaking out, or trying to break out anyway. Uh, not a lot of juice, but uh, the $76.78 high from September 11th, 2018, it had 840,000 shares uh, trying to get through it to 570. So not that bad. On Friday, you had about 800,000, about the same volume. Not a rousing endorsement, uh, but uh, there are a lot others out here that are more wicked uh, on breaking highs with lighter volume. That's at least the same volume. Uh, to, 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 to. What do we have? Dust. Do you S? T giving us a signal here, maybe. Uh, you've got the last low in the uh, gold miners bear 3X uh, on February 20th. That was $15.75, 9 million shares, 9, 9. I guess I'm turning ja uh, German. Uh, got into it with 5. Point, let's call it 5.7 million shares on Friday. Uh, a little gap back to the opposite way with a move on gold. Uh, resistance will come in at about 19, um, and we'll see what happens there. Uh, to, to see what else is on my list. Fitbit, we haven't looked at that one for a while. Uh, Fitbit. Um, $4.23, that's a 9 million share low from October 29th. Uh, you've got into that minus a dime on Friday, uh, but also minus some volume. Nine million shares back in October. Uh, then we'll call it 5.7 million shares on Friday. And a little bounce out here. Energy was still too much on the way down uh, to get too excited about these wearable company, companies. Um, you know, I haven't looked at GoPro for a while. Let's see what it's doing. G-P-R-O. Um, the only salvation is the biggest competitor to this is China. And if we do get tariffs, this one could actually come back from the dead. And with a monstrous amount of shorts in it, uh, could clean some people's clocks. Uh, but uh, and we'll keep an eye on that and see whether or not it actually does come back if the tariffs do go into effect. But uh, do keep an eye on that one. You got, you know, occasionally little bounces out of this thing. 
Groupon, G R P N. Still see ads. I don't see much going on in this. Um, just bouncing around. Hig, H I G, Hartford Financial Services. And no big signal in that one. Uh, I A G, I am gold. Eh, got back up to its gap down. That had uh, 19 million shares back on May 7th, not that long ago. So when we got into it uh, four days ago, 8 million shares, uh, 6.5, 3.5 today, just 2.4 million shares. But certainly nothing compared to that 18 million share or 19 million share down day on the 7th of May for I am gold. I haven't looked at keys in a little while on the show. I uh, did have a nice little pop. Um, you've got uh, one gap, two gaps. Uh, 85 bucks is where this thing is going to hit fairly massive resistance levels. Uh, Kulik and Safa, one of the big uh, semiconductor companies, makes a lot of uh, technology for gluing chips on boards and connecting leads and a bunch of other stuff. Actually, the mechanics of making a chip. Now, this thing's got a fairly decent retracement already. Let's see what we got here. Eh, you're up about that. Uh, 2189 would have been a 50% retracement. You got to 2201 today, so in that 50% trade. Uh, we're going to go to Mike in Toronto. How are you doing today, Mike? Yeah, hi. Thanks for taking my call. I want to look at um, NASDAQ listed stock, the trade desk, TTD. Yep, up up and away. Yeah. Uh, to, to, to. Are you long this now? I'm just watching, just watching. Um... It's a new 52-week high. Yep. What Not are you doing do? it on tremendous volume. You got 1.3 million shares on May 3rd. On Thursday, you had, or on Friday, you had 1.9. So you had enough to break that high on uh -huh. May 3rd. Um, Is there a measure? 4 goal? million shares today. So it's got it. Um, do, but, do you see a measure you know move at all? Huh? Like, like, does it have an ultimate target? Like, Well, I, I would say your target's higher. I, I would tell you what I would want if I wanted to get into it, and that is you've got great confluence right at 200 bucks. Uh, uh -huh. to, to, to 199 to 205. Uh -huh. If you could get it there and it came back on light volume, that may yeah. set up. You know, right now I wouldn't chase it. Okay. Um, if this is an ABC. Let's take a look at it here. Um, Did these stocks go to round numbers? Excuse like 300, me. 300, 350. Like, like, does the market maker push these things up? You know, up into these levels, like into a round number, uh, as where they exhaust themselves. Um, I don't know if they're looking so much as that. Um, if we do an ABC, you're basically looking at uh, one to one is 293. Uh, one to 382 is 340. Uh -huh. So uh, if this is an ABC, I can't chase stocks and I won't tell other people to do it. Uh -huh. uh, but uh, this could be a huge ABC on the way up. That's where I'm saying confluence wise would be the only way I could touch this. But you know what? There is beautiful confluence. So if you get the uh, pullback to that 200 and to 205 area, on light yeah. volume, that's uh, that's probably the best place you can buy that. If it closes below like 195, yeah. then you'd have to stop out. But for you know about a five percent risk in a stock, that would be it. Now, you may just get you know the, if the market turns nasty or something, this could pull back there and still not run the bullish version of this chart and still set up that rather large ABC up to. Almost 300 bucks. How about so, the gap there at 165? I see a double top at 165. Yep. Yeah. We'll be back in a minute. If you want to hang on, you certainly can, Mike. And uh, we'll look at a few other stocks before the end of the day.
I'm certain you are or strive to be one of the best of the best at everything you do in life. It's the most common trait that we tigers and tigresses share. If you're looking to become the best of the best when it comes to managing your money, let me teach you to do what most wealth managers tell you can't be done, which is how to time the markets. I'm Steve Rhodes, author of Mastering Probability, and for the last 12 months, Timer Digest has been tracking my newsletter signals, which have earned me the ranking as their number one market timer in the nation for the S&P 500 for the last 12 six and three months timer digest also ranks me as the number one market timer for gold as well the fact is markets can be timed and i'll teach you the exact set of tools that i use that has transformed me into one of the best at what i do sign up for mastering probability today by clicking on the newsletter tab on the homepage of tfnn.com and get immediate access to workshops where i take you step by step how to use an extraordinary set of tools as well as provide great market calls too. sign up today David White's newsletter, The Technology Insider, is focused like a laser on finding the next big things in technology. If you had invested only $10,000 in Microsoft in 1986, you'd have been a millionaire by 2000. Disruptive technology like Microsoft's is the key to these massive long-term profits, and The Tech Insider is the vehicle from TFNN to capitalize on these opportunities. This is the go-to newsletter that identifies, monitors, and profits on mostly little-known cutting-edge companies with great long-term prospects. David's experience is as an inventor of Emmy-winning animation products for TV and Hollywood that propelled a company public. Match that with 14 years as a full-time trader, and he's uniquely qualified to guide you through the light-speed world of ever-evolving high-tech. If you're ready to ride the next big technology bull market for less than $40 per month, log on to TFNN.com and get your two-week free trial to the Technology Insider. Get in on the ground floor of the next big thing today. Basil Chapman has a special subscriber webinar coming up Wednesday, June 12th at 5 p.m. called The Tide. In this webinar, Basil will be demonstrating techniques that can help one identify whether the tide is coming in or going out. That is, whether a trend is bullish or bearish in a variety of time frames. And Basil will be speaking specifically to indices, currencies, commodities, interest rates, and key stocks. The technical tools that Basil will be discussing are available on almost all software packages that will be shown in historical context as well as live for current market setups. Identifying the key trend allows one to trade with the tide rather than against it. Subscribers also gain immediate access to three archived workshops so you can get started right away when you sign up. For all the details on the opening call and Basil's upcoming subscriber webinar, The Tide, this coming Wednesday, visit the front page page of tfnn.com and sign up today catch tom o'brien professional trader and educator founder of tfnn also a special guest on cnbc tom will bisect and dissect the markets the tom o'brien show next on tfnn and mike is still on the line what else is going on mike Guess he's not on the line. Uh, what else do we have? Data. Uh, somebody's typing. Guess he left. Okay. Uh, I had a question about Tableau software, which is data. Um, did this thing really give any big signals that they were being acquired by Salesforce? And the answer is uh, no. And what do you got? You got. Uh, I, I I don't know how you would have known. They did a very good job of keeping this quiet. He had a couple of days on the upside. Maybe a few people knew, but not that many. Um, now, Data is a company that makes dashboards for CEOs. Um, I always wondered whether they could make it by themselves. This is a pretty nice acquisition for Salesforce. Uh, and why the software that they make is kind of limited in scope to executives, not something that your uh, production line guy is going to use for data. It does let you know everything that's going on with just kind of looking, um, they call them dashboards or control panels, uh, but it allows you to look at a lot of data and have something like a gas gauge and an oil gauge and indicator lights that tell you where things are going wrong. 
so you can kind of, if you're in a big executive, you can kind of go in there and look at a couple of these each day and notice the trends and whether or not there's anything you need to look at. Uh, let's take a quick, quick look at CRM. Um, hey, you got to pull back here, of course, on it spending the money, but it's not all that bad. Uh, again, CRM just in a long, uh, drawn out consolidation sideways, so not much to say about it. In the meantime, you want to sell when you can, not when you have to. And of course, what you want to do is see us tomorrow. Same bat channel, Sam Bat time.